Hi, welcome to another session of Programming with Blitz Basic. In this session I'm going to be looking at particles. Um, particles are done in lots of different ways and you'll find that you write, you write your particle functions in completely different ways depending on how you actually want to use the particles in your game. Um, I'm just going to be looking at some basic particle methods, how to draw them on the screen, how to move them around, that sort of thing, and it will we'll make sense in a minute really when we start going through the programs. Um, I've written four different programs to demonstrate this. Uh, all of these can be downloaded from my WordPress blog. Um, there will be a link to this on the right hand side. Okay, um, basically what is a particle? A particle is literally just like a point on the screen. So the most basic thing is a particle is a dot or a pixel that you might have thousands of them and you want to move, update all of them in every frame of your game and move them around. So it might be from an explosion it might be a waterfall or something with par particles of water, um, whatever. So we're going to look at a very basic particle program now. So I do my normal thing, I set up my graphics mode, set a game timer up, 30 frames a second I'm setting this up, just so it runs smoothly. We draw into the back buffer first, and we're having our type particle here, our particle type. It's going to have x coordinate, y coordinate, an MX coordinate which is how much it moves on the X axis each frame and an MY coordinate which is how much it moves on the Y coordinate. Now because particles can move at lots of different speeds I've put a hash next to all of these to show that it's their floating point numbers. It just means our particles can move very smoothly um, and at many different angles uh, without us getting any problems. So we start our main loop, so we clear the screen and we make a new particle. And we're going to put it in the middle, middle of the screen to start with by setting X and Y to the middle, middle of the screen coordinates. And we're simply going to move it uh, on the X axis by a random amount between minus 1 and 1 and M1, MY will be a random amount between minus 1 and 1. So it will just move in a random direction. Then we loop through our particles. The reason we loop through them is because we're going to be generating a new particle each frame. So every, every, every frame of the program there will be more particles to update. So this will loop through any particles that currently exist. And just simply add MX onto X and MY onto Y to move the particle. And um, we'll then use Rect, which is a rectangle function. So just draw a rectangle two pixels wide by two pixels high at the X and Y coordinates of that particle. We then wait for the timer and we flip the buffers to show what we're actually draw drawn and then we end it. So if I run this, you'll see it just randomly generates dots that come moving out from the middle of the screen. These are very simple particles. Um, if anything, it looks like a very simple star field, uh, like a warp field type of thing if you're writing a space type thing or it needs to be a screen save on Windows. But it's a bit like this. So that's what, that's what we've made so far. Next thing to do with particles is have them different colours and also we don't want them just going on forever like they do here because if I left this running for a couple more minutes the computer would just grind to a halt because there would be tens of thousands of particles even though most of them won't be on the screen. So, come to the second program. It's all the same code at the start. Again, all the same code, but we've introduced a few more things. I've introduced angles because in our old program it would simply put random one, minus 1 to 1 and minus 1 to 1 in both directions. What I want is I want it to generate a random angle that I want the particle to move at. And then it will use trigonometry using cos and sine to look at that angle and decide how many pixels um, on X or on Y it should move depending on what the angle is. So that's using cos and sine in uh, Blitz Basic. You can use TAN as well if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, it's worth going away and just googling basic trigonometry so you can see how angles relate to lengths on the size of triangles. That's what you'll find. So all we're doing is we're doing our angle that the particle is firing at and then calculating using cos and sine how much an X and how much an Y that has to be. This is the main reason why we're using floating points for our, um, for our variables here. Again we start the particle at the middle of the screen and we have a life variable in there now 
So if you go back to particle, you say I've added life. So I give it a life of between 100 and 200. Now that's 100 or 200 frames of the um, program. So we're running at 30 frames a second, so each particle will live between, I don't know, 3 seconds and 6 seconds. And then cycle through each particle, update x and y like normal, minus 1 from the particle's life, and then change the colour to be a colour based on the particle's life. So we're doing 50 plus p life, p life and 0. Colour is uh, red, green and blue, meaning that will give it a very reddy, bit yellowy kind of colour. No blue in there with it, only 0. So we should get a kind of fiery colour to it. Uh, we then draw a rectangle again, 2 pixels wide, 2 pixels high, at the coordinate of that particle. And then we say finally, if life is 0, then delete that particle. Again, wait timer and flip. So if I run this one, see it's very similar to the first one, except we've actually got colour on our particles. And also, all the particles are now moving um, in a direction, whereas before some of them were just sticking around the middle. You also notice it's getting darker as they go towards the edge, and they'll disappear, which is much better and much more efficient for the computer as well. So next one. Okay, the third program. Um, I've added gravity in as well, so not gravity. And I've put PPP, which is particles per. Um, well, actually, it was going to be frame. Okay, PPP is just how many particles it generates per frame, just so we can have more than what we are generating at the moment. So for each loop, again, it will generate a particle, but it's got another loop here, one, two, PPP. So if I have four here, that means each frame I'm going to generate four particles. And also I've got a gravity variable here of 0.1. So each frame for each particle, I will update my, which is how much how much it moves for by on the y-axis, by gravity. I'll also make them bounce as well. So if py goes above 450, which is going down the screen, then reverse the direction of my my but also divide it by 2, so times it by 0.5, so it, does, it, bounce, it will bounce basically twice as half as high as it did before. And also set PY to 450, so it's bouncing directly off the surface, just in case it goes through the surface and then you end up with things getting stuck. You can try removing that line and just see what I mean. Uh, we then remove one from life, change the colour, draw a rectangle and delete it if the life goes to zero. So if I run this one, you can see we've got a bit of a fountain going on, and the particles are bouncing off the floor at the bottom. We've also got a lot more particles, and obviously you can vary the PPP number to make this uh, either a lot more intensive or a lot lighter. You can also change gravity as well to either make them go much higher in the air, or just drop straight to the floor, like rocks. So if I cancel that, move on to the last program. In this one, because we're using angles, we can actually change um, where the particles actually go. So with this one, my angle is going to be random between SA and SA plus 10. SA is the spray, act, spray angle. So it will start at 0, and every time it goes around the main loop, the spray angle will go up by 2. So you should see a spray of particles going in a clockwise direction. Um, pretty much everything else has been left the same. I've added a speed variable just to vary the speed of the particles. To come out, and also I've um, yeah not done anything else actually, so I've just added that the spray angle. So if I run this one, you'll see it's going around the like cat and wheel in a spray. I made slightly bigger particles as well, so you can see it easier. And that's it. So load these examples by following the links on the right hand side. I'll put a zip file there with all four programs in it. Um, if you get stuck or you want to try something with particles and you're not sure how to do it, send me an email and I'll see what I can do. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye.